welcome to Practice with Pixel PJs, my new art series here where we just sit and draw together. Or maybe you just want to have something going on in the background while you draw so you're not getting bored or feel like the silence is deafening. So um, yeah, the idea is just to practice and get the creative juices flowing. Sometimes, you know, you've got that artist block, you don't know what to draw, and I figured this would be a good way to just, just get going. Disclaimer though, this video will be a little bit longer. I figured the Practice with Pixel PJ videos would be longer, so again, it's just to practice, spend some time drawing, you don't have to rush. Um, my video is sped up a little bit, so, you know. I think it'll be it's good if you aren't into the longer videos that is totally fine um, you can go check out some of the other stuff that I will be creating but um these will be longer videos just for the sake of practicing and taking it easy and just again hanging out together so I picked the topic of owls of course each week I would like to pick a new topic um, you know, if you have any suggestions or anything you would like to practice or would like to practice with me, I would love to hear them because <laughs> I could practice a ton of things, but I just think this is really helpful, especially, especially if it's a bunch of random topics, you know, how often do you draw an owl? I mean, maybe, maybe you draw owls all the time, but not, I think most people don't. <laughs> Anyways, my point is... It just helps you, it just helps. It helps get your creative juices flowing, it helps just get some practice in, and you learn how to draw something new, hopefully. So this time I'm gonna practice owls. You know, it's nice to get some references going, you kind of get the feel for what an owl actually looks like. So whenever you do, and end up getting that project or that commission where they are like, I want an owl in this picture, or I want Harry with Hedwig. And you're like, oh, okay, uh, I don't know how to draw an owl. Then you can look back at this time when you practice drawing owls with me and be like, waha, actually, actually, yes, I do. But um, yeah, it's just really good to get some sketches going, get some references to kind of just get the feel of what you are wanting to draw. Sometimes if you go in blind, you kind of you kind of go with what you think you know and you just make up some new stuff. So this is what I started with. These are my sketches. I went on Google, very simple. Went on Google and searched owls and just picked a couple that I thought, I thought, that I thought were interesting, so. Like this cute little baby owl. I'm assuming it's a babel, a babel, a babel, a baby owl. Um, cause it was just so round and poofy and really cute. It was probably one of the first pictures that popped up. But even if it wasn't, I definitely would have picked it just cause it was super cute. The first one I picked just cause it just seems most owl-like to me, if that makes sense. Um, your most generic owl that you usually see. There's also the ones with like the horns. I don't know any, I know like the names of owls, like a barn owl, but I couldn't point it out to you probably <laughs> if I actually saw one. But uh, yeah, so I got this cute little puff of an owl right here. And I think right now I'm just looking up the next one that I want to try and draw, which is why nothing is happening on the screen. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we'll just take a, a gander at my two majestic owls. Oh, here we go. Also, the beauty of digital art, let me tell ya. If you're like, whoops, I don't have enough space. You just grab those suckers and move them over. <laughs> I guess in a way it's cheating, but I don't know. 
I think it's great and it makes your life so much easier. I will say though that whenever I go from digital to traditional, if I go back to like my sketchbook or you know just anything traditional, I do have very bad, um, what is, what is the proper term? Spatial recognition? Um, I just have a hard time when I'm on the page, I will be like, okay, I'm gonna do a full body. There's, there, I know there's a term for this. Uh, I don't, I don't know what it is, but um, I'll do, I want to do a full body. So I'll start with the head and then I stand, I kind of start to get down towards the, the torso and I'm like, hmm, uh, I'm definitely only gonna be able to fit in the hips and the rest is just not gonna be able to happen so I'm very bad at that and I, I do think that is because I mostly do digital art so I don't have to worry about it I can draw a head whatever size I want and then I just resize it later on when I'm like okay this is the size I actually want this the subject of this picture to be so <laughs> In a way, it's bad if I did traditional art, but um, that's not my medium, so I'm not too worried about it. And I don't know, I do plan on doing Inktober, so hopefully that will help me with my spatial awareness. That's what I'm deeming it right now. You know what, why don't I just look it up? Uh, I don't even know how to look it up. What is the artistic term for space on a page. <laughs> Negative space? Positive space. Oh, okay, no. Composition, I guess, would be... Okay, well, you know, spatial... I already forgot what I said earlier. Anyways, you get the point. <laughs> I am very bad at that. But at the same time, I think I'm still good at it as far as when I'm doing digital art because I don't leave it. I don't think I leave my art in wonky positions. I would like to think that I later edit them so that, you know, it's where I want it to be. But again, that's the, the flaw is getting used to that. And I know I've heard a lot of people a lot of people say when they go to sketch after they do digital art for a really long time, and I'm, I'm definitely felt this before. It's like while you're sketching and you're like, oh, like I didn't, I didn't like that. You, you have this muscle memory to just hit Control Z or Command Z, and you're just like, huh, that's that's not gonna work here. So, uh, I guess I need to get my eraser. Well, hopefully it's just pencil. If you are using some other medium, you might not be so lucky. <laughs> Again, demonstrating the beauty of digital art right here. <laughs> Where am I gonna place these owls? <laughs> and on that note, I'd like to talk about um, Inktober. Inktober is coming up and I'm really excited for it and originally, I was debating whether or not I wanted to strictly do digital art since that is what I usually work with, but um, I did see the tweet from Jake Parker, the creator of Inktober, um, and if you don't know what Inktober is, I just assume most artists now know what it is because it's gotten so big, but in case you don't, Inktober is just basically every day for the month of October you do one ink drawing and then you post it you know with the hashtag inktober just so everyone can see all your creations and the idea of it is for you to get better essentially but um in response to whether or not digital art would be okay for inktober Jake Parker tweeted that the spirit of inktober is self-improvement and there's no better way to master your craft than to draw without a safety net Working digitally usually means using Control Z a bunch so you get your line just right and that can enable someone to develop bad drawing habits, which is exactly what I was just talking about. And then he goes on to say, there's no feeling like making a permanent line and knowing you can't change it without consequence. I think that's how you improve and get better because every ink line that 
that's put down on your paper forces you to think, commit, and adapt. No one is going to stop you from doing Inktober on your iPad, just know that you're missing out on the full experience of Inktober. So that did make me second guess um, doing Inktober digitally. I still would like to do a couple days just because again digital art is my main craft and I think again with like he said the spirit of it is self-improvement so if you are practicing your craft I don't see how you can't improve and that just that just is what digital art is it's access to all these tools that do make your life and your creative opportunities so much easier um, but that being said someone who you know is really good at Copic markers might find digital art really intimidating because you know you can't just jump on and I mean you could just jump on you can find the pen tool very easily but um, you definitely have to know the software and it's a whole different kind of tool so it's just a um, medium of choice and you are able to ink, quote unquote. So I think I will be, or I definitely will be doing a couple pieces because that's my craft and I would like to improve in my digital art, but I thought it would also be fun to just do it traditionally, try a new medium. Uh, I've never used ink pens before, so I think that will be pretty fun and exciting. I can imagine it's going to get pretty messy and that I'm going to make mistakes a bunch. And again, I can't control Z, but I'm excited to do both. And I think it'll be a really good experience. So no matter what anyone says, it's not like you are submitting this to some kind of application. It's just for your improvement and for fun. So you know, if you want to do digital art, I think that's totally fine. If you want to do traditional, that's totally fine. And if you want to do both, like me, that's totally fine. That's what I'm telling myself anyways. So back to my owls. Uh, as you saw, the first couple ones were just sitting on their perches. So I tried to get a little crazy and have some wings going on. Again, I figure, you know, wings, I don't draw those too often either, so it'd be nice to practice some different wing anatomy. And of course, all owls are different, so even if you did have to draw an owl, maybe you still want to look up references, but you will get a better feel for it. And again, it just helps get your creative juices flowing. And if you did want to watch this, you know, while you're drawing, you don't have to draw owls. You can just uh, hang out hang out with me while I practice art and while you practice art or are completing a project or something so yeah what I noticed owls the overall feel was oval head oval body <laughs> which was actually really simple um, so after I got a few sketches in and kind of got a better feel for quote-unquote owl anatomy I decided I would draw my own owl and you know see how I felt about it instead of looking at reference this time I just did it out of my mind and I kind of liked of all the owls I saw the really grumpy looking ones <laughs> like they just have the resting bee face you know what I'm saying like they're super cute but they just look really grumpy so I wanted to make one that looked like maybe he just woke up and his feathers were gonna be ruffled and he's just gonna be agitated <laughs> I think I think I I think I got what I was going for I think it turned out pretty cute and you'll see what I'm talking about at the end of my sketches when I start to do my line art and colors for the finished piece per se and that will definitely just be like a quick speed paint for you guys so uh, yeah, that'll be at the end so you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm not crazy. And I may have gone a little more hard than I originally planned. You know, I, I was like, oh, it's just going to be quick and cute. I'm just going to color it. And like I said, it was more just to get the art flowing and 
get started with the day, but uh, since I really liked it, I was like, I'm gonna color this and I'm gonna do a really good job. <clears throat> that was weird. Good job. As we are nearing the end of the practice portion of the video, I just wanted to say thank you for watching. I'm not sure if you made it this far. I know 15 minutes in can be pretty daunting, but if you did enjoy it, go ahead and throw me a like, send me a comment, and maybe you can subscribe and join me for more practice videos. And I would love to hear from you guys if there's anything you wanna practice with me or just anything you'd like to discuss. Uh, just let me know. I will be here and I will be waiting in the shadows, breathing heavily. No, I'm not going to be creepy. So let's go ahead and get into the magic. Insert magical sparkly sounds here. I'll, or there or here. I'll find some and I'll insert the magic, magic, cool, sparkly sounds. Okay, bye.